a reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It smells like church in here. I uh, chose as my title, I turned Christmas from a noun into a verb. Uh, so I called it Christmasing, the pilgrimage to the manger of the heart. And I think when we ponder in our hearts like Mary, the mystery of the Incarnation, we often get tricked into thinking that Christmas was something that happened, you know, a couple thousand years ago. Of course, the human person of Jesus was born in a dusty little corner of Palestine to a marginalized and voiceless teenage girl whose pregnancy brought with it all the scorn and derision that unwed mothers still face today. But if we think of the Incarnation as merely an historical event, something that happened long ago in a distant land, we miss the full import of its meaning. Christmas becomes the marking of an anniversary or a celebration of Jesus' birthday with cupcakes, God forbid, that roll around each year. We get 
lulled into thinking that all this, the hymns, the liturgy, the flowers, the candles, celebrates something that happened rather than something that God started and continues right here and right now for our very salvation. When we ponder the incarnation, we realize that God became incarnate. God gave all of himself to us in the person and work of his son that we might become God's sons and daughters, heirs, invitees to the party of enjoying the very life of God that has been poured into our hearts. The German mystic Silesius said that it may well be that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but it will be of no avail if Jesus is not born in our hearts. That is the powerful, transformative mystery set before us this evening. The carols, the crash, the candles, and the flowers all point not to a fond remembrance of something idyllic and sweet in centuries past, but to the earth-shattering reality that God became human, that human beings might become God. Which is Athanasius. Christmas, then, is really the shape of a life, my life and your life. Christmas is a journey, not a day. It is the journey that each of us must make to the hidden, hushed manger of the heart where we discover, wrapped there in the mud and straw right in the middle, that is, of our humdrum ordinary lives of taxes, tonsillitis, and T-bone steaks, right there, the gift of God's very self to us in His Son. Yes, Christmas is about what God has done in Jesus, but it's also about the journey of discovering who we really are and why we are really here. To know love and to make love known. All the various journeys we encounter in Scripture, the Israelites' journey out of bondage in Egypt through the waters of the Red Sea, the dust and grumbling of the wilderness to the Promised Land, Moses' journey into the dark cloud up Mount Sinai, to his encounter with God, the disciples' journey away from the safety and security of their settled lives as fishermen with well-mended nets and freshly painted boats, Jesus' own journey from crash to cross to the fish fry on the beach. All these geographical journeys point to a deeper spiritual journey that is the call of each one of us on the path of Christian discipleship. These aren't just stories about holy-ish people to read about in the same way we read about sports heroes or the giants of history. The Bible, as Martin Luther was fond of saying, is about you. When we take Mary's example and treasure these stories and ponder them in our heart, we see that these stories tell us who and whose we are and who we are called to be as the gathered people of God, that motley brood of unruly chicks that includes all people everywhere who are invited to shelter under the wing of the loving mother hen who welcomes all without exception. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. These stories chart to outward journeys in the geographical sense, to be sure, but they also set before us the real reason why each of us is here on this holy night. Not out of fondness, not out of sentiment, not out of duty, not out of obligation, or because our cable is on the fritz, but because the mystery of the incarnation tantalizes with the promise of satisfying our deepest hunger, our deepest yearning, our thirst to live lives that don't just skate across the surface of the brief span of days we've been allotted 
but authentic, dignified, truly human lives overflowing with ultimate depth and meaning. The journey is the journey to the heart, where we discover with the same astonished joy of the shepherds the gift that has been given us, the gift of what it means to be a truly human human being created in God's image and likeness and destined for union, communion, and enjoyment of the boundless creator of the universe who comes among us as a tiny infant wrapped in swaddling bands. The shepherd's journey to the creche then is our journey. Christianity is not a spectator sport, but asks us with the tiny mustard seed of our yes to consent to God's presence and action in our lives, to open ourselves to Him, to receive the gift that has already been given, to make a little room in the inn of our hearts for God to dance us away from self-preoccupation, to dance us away from fear, to dance us away from hard-heartedness and all the blessedly wrong-headed ways we seek happiness on our own terms. We open to the one who is all openness, and we find with great delight and no small dose of irony that we already have been given that which we seek. The pearl of great price has been sewn into our pocket all along. We looked far and wide. We likely ended up in some places that would have made even the prodigal son cringe. And the whole time, the whole time from the very foundation of the world, if you want to get technical about it, the whole time we've been in possession of the one thing necessary. Journeys are a little scary, of course, especially if you're like me, a homebody. They entail a whole host of things we can't predict, prepare for, or control, and that elicits fear. We like the safety and comfort of our routines and business as usual. We might not be all that happy. In fact, we might be utterly miserable, but at least we know what to expect everything in its place and a place for everything. That's why the angel tells the shepherds, do not be afraid, me phobu. The angel knows that a last-minute change of plans throws anyone into a tizzy. The angel knows the power and seduction of business as usual and how hard it is to leave behind our nests of comfort and predictability and set off in search of something too wondrous to wrap our heads around. The angel knows that with our little pep talk, we find the promise of unshakable joy, peace that passes all understanding and eternal life, not as a holiday destination in the distant future, but here and now, in the nitty gritty mud and straw reality of this very life, we find all that oh, just a little too exhausting. We would rather, with Melville's Bartleby the Scrivener, utter our, I'd prefer not to, and roll over and, of course, go back to bed. But we hear that the shepherds went with haste. They rushed to see with their own eyes this thing that had taken place. The shepherds weren't content with taking someone else's, even an angelic someone else's, word about the good news of great joy. They dropped what they were doing. They left their flocks. They set out. They made their pilgrimage into the unknown. And when they arrived at the manger, they saw with their own eyes the reality of which the angel spoke. They gazed into those depthless eyes of the child and realized in a lightning bolt of self-recognition who they were called to be. One of the great hazards, I think, of the Christian life is that we get so familiarized with the stories we hear year after year that we miss the gift that is offered. We brush blithely past the 
God's outstretched hand, inviting us to the table of divine welcome and spend our time tending our sheep instead. We trust that others can and probably even should make the journey to the manger of the heart. Sounds good. But we content ourselves with secondhand reports, the menu and not the meal. It's in T.S. Eliot's Four Quartets that we find those haunting lines. We had the experience but missed the meaning. That, I think, is the challenge of Christmas. We show up, we go through the motions, we even enjoy ourselves, but the deep, transformative, transfiguring meaning of what we experience eludes us. Christmas Eve is reduced to a kind of aesthetic balm on the surface of our lives, and we content ourselves with the half measures of quiet desperation that pass for human happiness these days. But perhaps instead of asking someone, did you go to Mass on Christmas Eve, we should ask, are you making the Christmas journey? Have you set off in search of that tiny babe wrapped in cloth in the manger of your heart? Are you Christmasing? There's no shortage of folks like the Emperor Augustus who would like to register you and get your name on their mailing list. Mailing list. They won't sell your information, of course. They'll respect your privacy. Just sign up, register now, and worship the emperor, and it will all be all right. Now, these days we don't have emperors, but the promises of happiness, wealth, and a fetching figure haven't really changed that much. It's the shepherds who remind us, however, that giving our names to the emperor won't satisfy the ache in our hearts or our longing for depth and meaning. The shepherds remind us that our true names aren't written in Augustus's dead ledger, but in the book of life, that is the very heart of the living God. The feast of Christmas and the mystery of the incarnation remind us that when we make the search, when we set aside the fear that keeps us locked in our comfortable desolation, when we journey to the manger and see with our own eyes the astounding truth of who we are and why we are here, we realize that only in Him is our strength and joy and happiness and peace to be found. So my prayer is that this Christmas season, we each of us make the journey. My prayer is that we make haste to the manger, and just like in Monopoly, we go directly. We do not pass go. We go straight to the manger. Because it's love Himself who waits patiently and kindly to be born in you, that you might discover yourself loved and forgiven just as you are and learn to be that love in the world. So, Merry Christmasing. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rise and affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary 
and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, <clears throat> suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page 19 of your service leaflet. Brothers and sisters, on this most holy night of our Lord's birth, that we may find peace, joy, and contentment in this holy season, let us pray for ourselves and all those in need of our prayers, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church of Christ, that it may faithfully proclaim the good news of salvation and may care for the needs of God's people in all corners of the world. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord for peace in our troubled world, that the darkness of war and injustice may be replaced by the light of peace and love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord for all those in need of our prayers, the homeless, the unemployed, the hungry, those who are hospitalized, those who are imprisoned in body or soul, and all those for whom this season is one not of joy, but of trial and sadness. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord for the sick, that their illnesses may be turned into health, and their sorrow into rejoicing, particularly Nicole and the whole family. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord For those who labor this night on behalf of others, doctors and nurses, police officers and firefighters, gas station attendants, bus and taxi drivers, and all those whose work prevents them from sharing this evening with those they love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord in thanksgiving, we remember the lives of those who have gone before us in the faith, especially Rob Hall, that we, like them, may remain faithful to the end and live forever in the light of your eternal glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Mighty God, mercifully hear the prayers of the people you have chosen as your own. Give us zeal in our ministries and joy in our work. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
For those of you who are viewing on the webcast, um, need, needless to say, our celebrant is not uh, the right Reverend Scott Hayashi. It's uh, Canon Nestler. Uh, Bishop Scott is a little bit under the weather, so uh, Mary June has graciously agreed to, to step in. So if you see his name at the bottom of your screen, uh, ignore it. Okay, so. Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin to receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood, of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Mark, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. 
by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us receive the peace. Alleluia!
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us to spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God, almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you this night and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen.